Good morning, y'all. I'm Catherine Ross with The Street. I'm here on the floor of the NYSE with Jim Kramer. Jim, let's just get right into it. Sure. Caterpillar's earnings miss. Well, okay, so Caterpillar uh, had told you last year that they had reached their high water mark. I think that Caterpillar was surprised about how weak China was. Uh, there weren't a lot of standouts that, that helped Caterpillar. It is immensely profitable. And I think that what people say is, okay, here's the reset. People now know that um, what I have been saying, I mean, you know, one of the things that just bothered the heck out of me, there were people, um, including people I know quite well, who were saying uh, that Powell did a lot of homework and he really understood what was happening. And all of these things had been in the works, the weakness, but he pushed everybody over the edge. And so did, so did Trump with the tariffs. Uh, there was a lot of pull through to beat the tariffs. Uh, it didn't affect CAT, there was no pull through. Um, there just wasn't, uh, when you see that kind of degradation, uh, what that says is December was really bad. I think December was a very weak month in the economy. Now, one of the problems with, uh, with the world economy, one of the problems that Powell faces is, is that he's gonna probably get a pretty strong employment number. So once, you know, and, he, and he has a conference this week. So again, it's a still in Charybdis for him. He's gotta be able to figure out how does he get through the potential inflation from workers and the deflation from earnings. It's very hard for him. Uh, there's a, uh, I've been thinking about the way to do it. And what you gotta do is look at Union Pacific. They, they gave workers a, a, a very meager increase in wages, but they had returned a huge amount of money to shareholders and they made a lot of money. Uh, a, a Caterpillar is one of those situations where I knew it was gonna be weak. And, and I was just upset apoplectic that the chairman made it even weaker. I mean, you knew it was going to be weak. Now, you could say, and there are people who take this, take every different side, Catherine, that that's, it's not his job to prop up Cat. That's not what I'm saying at all. I mean, you know, so many people are so stupid. What I am saying is, is that Cat was headed down their book of business, and this accelerated the decline of business. And I think that only non-business people would disagree with that. And, I'm not saying I listen to the cat calls, it's just that so many people don't get what I talk about. What I'm talking about is the, the economy peaked just when Jay Powell started talking about how the economy is accelerating. Uh, accelerating because that's the fact of the thing when you say that we got to put all these ra uh, rate hikes through. And I was urging that, I only did one and done, I only did one just because I wanted to sate the opinion of people who were saying, Jim, you're completely wrong. Uh, and everybody knows that because I was saying, okay, listen, that one's been announced. But Caterpillar shows you what happens in a worldwide slowdown. Uh, very few companies are immune. Now, the ones that are immune will be like Procter & Gamble. Or there'll be, uh, and we're gonna talk about N NVIDIA, but there'll be certain companies in technology that are avoiding the glut and they're in certain areas that we can go over. Uh, either this one, I don't know whether you wanna do this one or a private video for action alerts, but it's quite jarring. Um, should it have been jarring? It's exactly kind of, uh, when you look at Union Pacific and Norfolk Southern, they didn't disappoint. Which you wrote about yeah, in your Real Money column this morning. But you felt that they're on the verge of disappointing. Uh, uh, Caterpillar has a much more worldwide, you know, the rails don't, there's no rail to China. Uh, but uh, Caterpillar is much more uh, broad. And what it says is, listen, it's a gradual slowdown. Now, let's distinguish this from a recession. You, we're, we're slowing down from a very high level. And if the Fed no longer tightens and we get a trade resolution, then you're going to pay 150 for CAD. And that's why the stock is not down as much as you would think. Was Apple right to highlight China now that we've seen CAD? Yeah, I mean, now, look, I say Apple, don't uh, trade it, own it. Uh, Apple was up four on Friday, and I was scrambling and writing, and that's not right. We don't want Apple. If you like Apple, you want it in the 140s before the quarter. Um, I'm a student of stocks, not necessarily of the product, but you want that stock in the 140s going in because when you pre-announce a quarter, and I've always said this in all my books, when you pre-announce a quarter, what that really means is that you have no visibility for the next quarter, not the current quarter that you pre -announce. Remember, they pre-announce for the fourth. You don't pre-announce for the fourth if the first is good. You pre-announce for the fourth because the first hasn't showed a turn. Uh, and you could say, well, listen, they did it right at the beginning of the year, but they have order books just like everybody else. And it's obvious that this quarter's bad for Apple. The one that, the one that, we're, uh, that we're experiencing, the one we, we finish, is bad. But we think that, I think that this quarter's bad. 
you know, this quarter that is in January. And what about? So I, I don't want people to get any any excitement at all about this particular industry. So I'm pulling up Nvidia's numbers right now because right. they're still down about 15. But you know, Nvidia, percent. remember, Nvidia was at 125, 126 uh, at the end of at the beginning of January and then of December. So actually, Nvidia, which was up 10 off of Xilinx, is not down enough. Uh, now I say not down enough because there are 22 buys. And I think that if people see this stock and it's only down that much, you're going to get some people only down fifteen percent. Remember, it was up ten last week, and uh, it was tempting uh, to buy it when it was down before this run. And so far, you're not down that much if you bought it before the run. And Action Alerts Plus, you guys said previously that you're just waiting. Yeah, you know, I mean, there was a, a teaching that we gave. People should come to our teachings where there was this legend to me legendary interaction with someone who questioned why we downgraded it when it was 27, 260, 270. And I, I, he wasn't hostile, but he was saying, listen, why did you downgrade it? You know, basically, your dog was even named, and of course, I've changed the name of my dog. Um, and I said, uh, and, and we were going back and forth, and it was very subtle and genteel. And then finally, I said, okay, they're going to miss the quarter. And it was just out there, and I put it out there, and immediately I kind of regretted that I said it so harshly because I like NVIDIA so much, but it doesn't matter. I may like NVIDIA a lot, but NVIDIA, the stock, is a different story. Um, and um, it, I knew that they had done, that gaming wasn't that good. I knew that data center wasn't that good. Uh, I knew that crypto wasn't that good. The problem was I didn't know crypto was completely bad. We saw the flow back of, chi of the ca graphic cards. Uh, gaming has really slowed. Catherine, gaming is slowed. And you know people have to recognize that gaming is slowed. Activision Blizzard stock in you know, the 40s. EA down a lot. Take two down 30 from its high. Gaming is slowed and Fortnite did, turned out to be not the gateway drug to gaming that we thought. Uh, Bob Swan last week in Intel did say very pointedly, did say very pointedly, listen, we have indigestion in the data center business that was, uh, and then, yet AMD, which had a very similar read through, went up. Why did AMD go up? Because AMD is taking share from Intel. So people say, oh, I can buy some AMD. I happen to really like AMD stock when it comes in. But this is a, uh, if you take a look at the bifurcation, you've got the semiconductor uh, equipment stocks. Uh, Tim Archer saying, listen, our order book says it, it's going to start rallying from here. And that's still right. You have Xilinx, which is up a lot because that's 5G and defense. But NVIDIA is not in 5G and it's not defense. Uh, AMD is not 5G, it's not defense. Intel is not 5G and not defense. Qualcomm is 5G, but that's the fight with uh, with Apple. Apple has huge gaming in China. You, your read through from NVIDIA is bad from China. NVIDIA has business, It's a, you know, you'll see that made in Taiwan, but that's not Taiwanese business, that's worldwide. That just happens to be where they manufacture. So uh, the money's gonna flow back to drugs, you know, all of that huge rotation we had, it wasn't a fake out. Those stocks aren't going to go all the way back, but it is going, the money's going to revert to Procter, uh, which was a very good quarter. So uh, the rotation is was so vicious, uh, and now, and a lot of it was short squeeze, uh, but it, it, the rota rotation has to be rolled back, except for Xilinx. Interesting to see whether Western Digital holds. It is a very long day. Keep in mind that you, you're getting a chance if Procter can go back to 1991. I'm keying on that. I'm keying on Kimberly, uh, which reported a quarter where they basically, kind of, I felt, said kind of last bad quarter. Uh, keying on PepsiCo and Co Coca-Cola, which I think will be okay. Um, in, in the Norfolk Southern uh, piece that I wrote, they, they talked about the uh, loosening of, of freight costs. That's really positive for the consumer product stock. So let's follow all these things, uh, but recognize that NVIDIA still hasn't taken out its its uh, Jan 3 low and the Caterpillar. Uh, people who got excited about Caterpillar were gun jumping. Does Howard Schultz have what it takes to become a president? Okay, so look, I, I think Howard is a vision. I, I know him as a businessman. He did, was a visionary and uh, he can be prickly. I mean, I've had instances that are prickly uh, and one of the things that you know about politicians is that they have to have very thick skin. Uh, I also, in his meet, in his interview with Scott Pelley, uh, I didn't like what he said about Philadelphia because that Kevin Johnson was the CEO, and Kevin Johnson did fantastic work to try to repair the relations there. Uh, so when he said it was on him, well, it was Kevin. It was on Kevin, not on Howard. Uh, and that'd be the type of thing that if I pointed out, I don't know, that's not gonna sit well. 
but it's the facts. And uh, uh, he's going to sell a lot of Starbucks stock. They got a buyback. The quarter was good, but it was. Uh, look, my politics are irrelevant. I know that what matters is is that somehow they may link him with Starbucks. And it was interesting that he was wearing an orange apron at the end of the interview, not a green one. All right, Jim, we got to get over to Real Money, sure. where I want to talk more about your to Real Money action, column. To the action alert. Or to the action alert, sorry, no where I want to talk about your Real Money column. Sure. Um, so thanks for Remember, joining us, guys. NVIDIA, let's understand each other. NVIDIA the dog I renamed Everest. I'm very clear about this. Did I say that NVIDIA was tempting to take a small position ahead? Yeah, but, you know, no enthusiasm. What I really did was just slam the heck out of NVIDIA for a very long time. Uh, and there's just new negatives that I didn't count on. All right. Thanks for joining us, y'all. We'll see you tomorrow.